Hey there. As many of you know, biking is something that I've always been super stoked about. And I think another bike related video has been long overdue. In fact, I've made two videos related to this commuter bike conversion project. In this video, I'm comparing the gear ratios. If you're looking for the actual how-to documenting the conversion process, that's the other video. A link to that one is at the end of this one and in the video description. Today I'm going to look at gear ratios again. Uh, this time though I'm working on my commuter bike. Uh, I need to replace some of the parts of my drivetrain because they're a bit worn out. And while I'm at it, I thought I would uh, convert this from a 3x8 drivetrain to a 1x11. Now this is called a 3x8 because it has three chain rings up at the front and it has eight cogs at the back pretty obvious name, right? And equally obvious is what I'm changing it to, which is a one by 11, which as you can guess, is going to be uh, one chain ring at the front and uh, 11 cogs at the back. Now, um, what I need to think about when I'm making that change is uh, the gear ratios, because you know I have quite a few gear combinations on here and I need to make sure that I still am gonna have the range that I need to get up hills, but also go fast on the downhills. So we're going to compare the two sets of uh, gear ratios and see how, how the two stack up with each other. Now to compare the gear ratios on these two different setups, we're going to use one of my favorite pieces of software, Microsoft Excel. We'll start with my current 3x8 setup. So what we need is the number of teeth on each of the three chain rings. And then we need the number of teeth on each of the eight cogs. And now to calculate the gear ratios, we're just going to divide the number of teeth on each of the chain rings by the number of teeth on each of the cogs. And we'll get the gear ratio for each combination. And incidentally, to see why you divide and what this means a little more visually on a bike, check out my first gear ratios video. So in this first cell here to get our gear ratio, we're going to need to divide that 30 in that cell divided by this 11 over here in this cell. Now I want to be able to fill this down and across. So what I'm going to do is force it to always use the numbers in row 2 as the ones on the top of my division. And the way you do that is by putting a dollar sign in front of the 2. And then I also wanted to always use the numbers in column A as the bottom of my division. So I put a dollar sign in front of A in my division. That's just a little side note about using Excel, but you never know, you might find that useful sometime. So now I can just fill down here to see all the gear ratios for my smallest chain ring. And then we can drag this across to fill out the other two chain rings gear ratios. Now, there's something you should know. A three by eight or nine or whatever bike doesn't have as many truly different gears as you might have thought. There's actually quite a bit of overlap between the range for each of the three chain rings. There's 24 different combinations in our spreadsheet here, but that doesn't mean that you realistically have 24 different speeds on this bike. Look at the top five or six gears of my lowest range and then the bottom five or six gears of my middle range, they're more or less pretty comparable there if you look at it. 1.3 up to 2.73, not much different than 1.4 up to 2.8. And the same is true if you compare the ranges for the middle ring and the big ring, the top five or six combinations of the middle ring are not much different than the bottom five or six of that big ring. Or look at it this way, if you take the eight different combinations that my middle ring has, then there's really only three combinations from the small ring that are lower and two combinations from the big ring that are higher. So altogether, you've got the eight plus three plus two, you really only have, realistically speaking, 13 different speeds on this bike. And that kind of plays out when I ride it too. I use the middle range most of the time and really only drop down to the small ring when I need those lowest ones and I 
go up to the big ring only when I need those top ones. So now, then, let's compare it to this new setup. So again, you need the tooth count for all the cogs. And then the chain ring. And then set up the division to get the gear ratio for each combination. And you see the whole range of gear ratios for this new setup. Now, I put some thought before I bought the components for this as to what those numbers would come out to be using this analysis right here. First I picked my rear cog set, or cassette as it's usually called. And anytime you're choosing a cog set, there's a trade-off between how big of a range you have in terms of the number of teeth between high and low, and how big the gaps are between each gear and the next one up. The reason it's a trade-off is because to have a bigger range, you need to have bigger gaps, but bigger gaps mean that every time you shift, it's a bigger jump in terms of how hard or easy it is to pedal. On one end of the spectrum, you have road bike cassettes with very small gaps in between cogs, but a narrow range from low to high, all the way up to mountain bike cassettes with a huge range, but far bigger jumps in between gears. I chose this because it's a nice balance between the two. Now, once you have the cassette nailed down, then you gotta decide on how many teeth you want on your single front ring. I chose 42 in big part because I wanted my lowest gear combination to be the same as it is under my current setup. And with a 42 tooth ring, it is. Current setup, 30-30 gives me a gear ratio of one. New setup, 42-42 gives me a gear ratio of one. So I haven't lost anything at the low end. If you look at the other end, my new setup here, highest gear ratio is 3.8, whereas in my old setup, I have two gears that are higher than that, 4.0 and 4.73. So I am losing a bit of the range at the high end going to this new setup. But realistically, I very seldom use those top gear combinations anyways. I could have picked a larger front ring, let's say 44 teeth or even 46 teeth, and I would have had some higher high ranges, but then I would have sacrificed the low gear. And for me, that was more important, having that same low gear. I could have picked a smaller ring than 42, 40, 38, to get an even lower low gear, but then I really would have sacrificed even more at the high end. So 42 puts it right where I want with that balance between high and low. So when you look at those two side by side, it's really not as much of a difference as you might initially think. And you're not losing as much as it might seem going from a three ring setup to a one ring setup. All right, so I've got my bike set up now with my uh, one by 11 setup, my one uh, 42 tooth uh, chain ring at the front and my 11 cogs at the back. And I haven't really lost too much in the way of my range of gear ratios because I have the same low gear with this big cog and I don't have quite the same high gear but close um, with this smallest cog at the back. The way I ride this bike uh, I'm, I'm almost never going so fast downhill that I want to pedal to add to it so so it's going to be perfect for this setup plus you have the, ad you have the added bonus here that uh, I've lost the front derailleur and then all the cabling for the front and the front changer up here so uh, you've lost a bit of weight there not that that matters on this but what more importantly you've lost uh, you've, you've made it a lot simpler because all my changing is is with one changer I can go through the whole range of my my gear ratios without having to think about the combinations front and back it's just one high low all the way there all right so that's changing from a uh, 3x8 to a 1x11 setup on a bike.